Hey, good morning, everybody. We're so glad to be able to come into your house today and worship with you. So I want you to get ready because we're going to have a great time in the Lord today. We're going to sing a few songs with you. I want you, if you're sitting in your living room watching me, why don't you stand up? Let's give the Lord a great big clap offering and let's get started as we have come to magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And as we enter into the house of the Lord, we sing praises, praises to our God. Magnify the Lord with me. Sing all His name together. And as we enter into the house of the Lord, we sing praises, praises to. Let's do that again. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us sing all His name together as and we enter the house of the Lord. We're going to sing praises. We sing praises. Praises to to be honored and magnified and blessed and praised, isn't he?
I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes inside of me I raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a Praises are all up from the 
would you just raise your hand and holler, Hallelujah!
Can you give the Lord a great big praise this morning because He still can do great and mighty things. If you have your Bibles with me today, uh, or with you, if you'd like to turn with me, I'm going to be in Psalms 71, verse 5. I want to talk to you about when the world lost hope. For the last couple of weeks, it feels like that we've been living in a TV series, 1959 to 1964. I grew up watching a program called The Twilight Zone, a place that exists at any moment of time, of space, or of mind. But always when you least expect it, when you find yourself in the realm of the unlimited possibility, be careful what you say or do. The right decision may help you find your way back out, sometimes with greater happiness and wealth. The wrong decisions could often lead to madness or death or an eternity trapped in this dimension. Tread warily past the signpost ahead that says you've entered the twilight zone. I never envisioned that we would be living life that has been instructed to us by the government and the health officials. Simple things like going outside feels taboo. Forget shaking hands or a hug because we have to practice social distancing and, and having a cough is the scariest thing any of us could encounter. This pandemic known as COVID-19 or the coronavirus has caused our daily lives to halt and our world sits and waits for some form of positive news. But every hour that passes, it seems more depressing as we starve for something positive that will give us some kind of hope that it's over with. But here we are saying, I can't believe it. These words follow the evidence that Something we thought would not or even could not, something extraordinary, unusual, unexpected happened. This situation reminds me of how the world reacted when Jesus was crucified. This single moment in history is when the world truly lost all its hope. The Savior of the world, He was dead. And at that moment, it seemed as if evil and darkness had truly won. And the light of the world had been extinguished for good. At this point in history, hope was truly gone and humanity was left alone, broken and hopeless. How do we know this? Scripture gives us insight into the disciples' lives, the ones that had followed Jesus for over three years. And we get to watch how they're going to act to this I can't believe it moment. For the next three days, and this men's, uh, these men that had followed Jesus, now they're overwhelmed, and they have left their emotion, or they have let their emotions and feelings override their faith, and now they find themselves in a place of despair. These men are frightened. They don't know what to do. They're afraid of the Jews, fearful of their own future. Are we going to die now? Despair has stole their faith. It has been replaced with fear. And now they're allowing their emotions and their feelings uh, of being overwhelmed to make decisions out of fear. What they will do next. When your emotions and feelings lead you in the place of despair, you'll find yourself like the disciples in a place of defeat. All of their dreams, preconceived ideas of what he came to do and how he would accomplish it are nightmares now. They're disappointed. Jesus was going to overthrow the Roman government, establish a new kingdom. And now all their hopes have vanished. All their expectations unmet. Their investment paid no returns. When you let defeat be fueled by fear, you'll find yourself like the disciples in a place of discouragement. They're now ready to give up. Thomas didn't even come. He had already abandoned the faith because it's all over. Hope is gone. We have nothing to trust in. Hal Lindsey wrote in one of his books on hope, man can live about 40 days without food, three days without water, five minutes without air, but only one second without hope. These men had lost their hope. 
The only reasons they saw themselves as failures was because they had misplaced their hope and trust in Jesus, and now he's dead. It's over with. Counted it loss. Walk away. There's nothing left for us here. The beauty of having the Bible is we know how the story ends. Jesus was not held by the grave, but rather he conquered the grave. For the disciples and all of Jesus' followers and the whole world, it looked like hope was lost. But in actuality, hope was gained. After three and a half years preaching, the kingdom of heaven has arrived and, and demonstrated the same by healing the sick casting out devils, then ultimately gave his life, paying the ransom price to redeem the sins of all mankind. On the third day, hope was fully restored, defeating death and the evil because the Savior of the world was alive. I wish I knew why we're in times like we're living in. I really do. I can't give you answers, but I can point you to hope. Psalm 71.5 says, You are my Hope. Let me say that again. You are my hope. In the days that we are living in, Jesus is our only hope. Even though our lives may be changing due to the unfortunate circumstances we're facing today, here's one thing for, we know for sure. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Apostle Paul wrote in chapter 8 of Romans and uh, the message, uh, not only is He with us, He loves us. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose if God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and, and exposing Himself to the worst by sending His own Son? Is there anything else He wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing. None of these phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way Jesus, our Master, has embraced us. We're going to get through this together. Even though hope may seem jaded, worn out, or dulled over, less intense by time, Maybe we need to change our approach and how we look at the situation. If you cannot change your situation, the only option you have is to change your attitude so that you don't become a victim to your emotions and your feelings. That will lead you to a place of fear which will cause you to feel despaired, defeated, and discouraged. May of 1824, after almost 12 years of obscurity, the death musical genius Ludwig van Beethoven reappeared in the Vienna Orchestra Hall to conduct his climactic ninth century. At the end of the last movement, handkerchiefs, hats, and hands were thrown into the air as visual gestures to the death Beethoven of their appreciation for his masterpiece, how much more should we be willing to wave handkerchiefs, throw our hats, lift our voices, and raise our hands in power and dependence on our Heavenly Father who created the earth with its trees, its plants, its flowers, its mountains, its valleys, its forests, its deserts, its oceans, and its rivers, and its streams? who created us in His image and gave us dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, and everything on earth that lives, moves, and breathes. And for the greatest masterpiece, His only begotten Son, He arose from the grave, ascended into heaven, and now He sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. And for an encore, He's coming back to receive us so we can live with Him eternally. I think you ought to go ahead, wherever you are, whatever, whatever you're doing right now, I think you ought to stand to your feet and clap your hands and shout, Bravo! 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 Bravo, for my hope is in, in these times of uncertainty is in the Almighty God. Will you do these three things with me this week? 
Will you cultivate the ground of your heart? How do you do that? Plow it with praise. Will you plant the word of faith? And number three, will you prophesy to your investment? Would you do that? I want to pray with you today. Father God, I praise you for the incorruptible seed of your word. I plant the seed in the ground of my heart knowing that it will produce a harvest of life, not death. And I will be filled with faith, not fear, during this time of chaos we're experiencing in our nation because you are my hope. Can I say to you right now, wherever you are, if you need something from the Lord, would you just raise your hand right where you are? Because I do believe even though this is coming through the internet and you're watching from your home, my God is our hope and He can help you in whatever it is you're going through. Not just a virus that we're seeing. There are a lot of things that are happening in our lives today. Our God, I want you to know that God is able to meet your need today. Right where you are, you can experience the power and the presence of an almighty God in your home. Father, let your presence reside in everyone of these homes today that they will feel your presence and know that you're near and that we know that you are our hope. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much Legacy Family for watching. If this video has blessed you in any way, remember there are three ways to give and the graphic for that will be up right now. You can give through texting, online, or through our church center app. Also, before you leave, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And while you're there, make sure you ring that bell so you can stay up to date on everything Legacy Community Church is doing. We love you. Have a blessed day.